Hello, I'm Professor Steve Novit. Welcome to this latest tutorial using the HSPIP 5.4th edition. In the previous tutorial, we looked at how to measure the HSP of a polymer or a pigment or a nanoparticle. Now we'll try and use those values for complex formulation challenges. I open the polymers form and I see this very large list of polymers. These are the original Charles Hansen list. It's too complex for this tutorial, so I'll load a smaller set, called conveniently small set. And these are just some representative values of typical polymers. The first thing I can do with these is try and find compatibilities between polymers. So suppose I'm interested in PMMA. I double click on it, and we find that it's sorted by distance of each polymer from the PMMA. The distance is the sum of the squares of the differences between the DD, DP and DH values. So we see that this polyurethane is quite close to this PMMA, whereas PEMA is a bit further away. And if I go to the bottom, I find that polyvinyl alcohol is very far away because it has a very high DH. So that's very different from this DH. And I also find that polypropylene has a very different DP and DH from R, D, P, and D, H. So we have them sorted by distance. So we can find compatibilities between polymers. Let me resort it. And let's say that I want to compatibilize polycarbonate with polyvinyl butyrol. Which solvent would be best for compatibilizing these two polymers? Well, let's have a look. I click the solvent match button and you see something happens on the screen behind. So I go there. So now we see our two polymers surrounded by the solvents. In this case, they're the solvents that I'd loaded with polylactic acid, but they could be your own solvent list. And we can get a good idea of which solvents are good for each individual polymer or for combining them. It's a bit clearer if I turn on the wire frame and I can also zoom in on this a bit so I can look more closely. You see in there a golden ball. That's the junction. That's the solvent which would be best for both of these polymers. Of course, I could use hexafluoroisopropanol for this polymer, or I could use pyridine for this polymer, but they would each be good only for that polymer. It's the junction at 18.4, 5.210, which would be the best solvent for combining these two polymers. We can do some other things with these solvents. We can, for example, select xylene and then go to the polymers form again and do a polymer match. So that's now matching the polymers to our solvent xylene and we find that polyvinyl acetate, polyethylene, polysilicone are a good match to xylene. If I choose a different solvent such as pyridine and do that again, polymer match, then obviously PVC, polyelectric acid are more compatible with pyridine and so forth. So you can get a good range of capabilities of thinking through your polymers and solvent matches. There's an advanced option for this complex optimization called the 3D optimizer. Here we have three polymers we want to optimize and we can do clever things like making solvent blends and changing the ratio of those blends and seeing the distances. All this will make much more sense when we understand solvent optimization. I'm just showing that there is another possibility for doing complex optimizations.